So what we're going to take a look at is the Convio and Convio Flex settings. These settings which we can adjust through that of our main Seba screen. Now here you can see I've got the machine running and I've got the cutter bar attached so we can go straight in and have a look at how these settings are being adjusted. The first thing I want to do is when I attach my cutter bar is go into my front attachments menu and go to my front attachment parameters. Here I can have an overview of the cutter bar that I have selected. So I can make sure that the cutter bar selection does read as Convio, making sure that if it doesn't read as Convio, I'm not going to have some of the functions available to myself in my Seba screen. So I need to make sure as the operator that this is allowed or is selected, the right cutter bar of which I've got on my machine. Underneath that then, I can also see the working width. So here I know I've got a 10.8 meter Convio Flex cutter bar. Again, we need to make sure our working width is correct and set correctly. So this is then accommodating or allowing our telematics data to have the right measurement intervals and also for the likes of our field scanner too. We need to make sure this is selected and set correctly so that if we do have the field scanner selected, the field scanner area sensor for our GPS, then the actual width of the cutter bar is being detected correctly and therefore the field scanner can be used correctly too. If I do find that for whatever reason this is in the wrong width, I can obviously increase and decrease this accordingly. Next to my working width, I can also see that of my partial width proportion. So these are the partial widths across that of my entirety of my cutter bars. So for example, if I'm taking a full cutter bar's width on a 10.8 meter cutter bar, I know that I will be taking six partial widths. However, if I come to the end of the day and I've got a couple of runs left of the field and I'm not taking a full cutter bar's width, I can then turn my partial selections down. This is then going to allow my cutter bar to detect how much crop it's got coming through and this then ensures that our telematics data and our yield mapping data is correct. It's not telling our machine that we're taking in a full width when in actual fact we're taking in half a width. We can adjust this through that of the main Seba screen and we can also adjust this through that of our favorite keys on the joystick too. I can select one of my pre-select settings. So if I go to partial widths here and now I can adjust these on the go whether to increase or decrease these using the favorites keys. Now taking a look back to the Seba screen, we can also then see our auto contour cutting control. So again, the sensitivity of our auto contour on our machine. So again, if I need to increase or decrease the sensitivity of my auto contour for the lift and lower settings, I can go in and adjust this sensitivity. I can increase the sensitivity to a positive number, or if I want to decrease the sensitivity, I can also then bias it to a minus number, and zero being its natural position. I can then also adjust the sensitivity of my cross leveling. So again, our cutter bar is using auto sensor bands if it's in the rigid mode. And that is looking at the sensitivity of these auto sensor bands when cross leveling the cutter bar. So if I find that my sensitivity is selected and is set too high, I will see, start to see the likes of a wavy effect in my crop stubble. So again, maybe my cutter bar is reacting a little bit too quickly or a little bit too often for my liking. I can then come in and turn this sensitivity down. On the flip side, if I find that my auto contour is maybe not keeping up with what I'm doing, I can then also increase the sensitivity, making sure that I increase this in small intervals so that we're not putting extra strain on the cutter bar, we're seeing how that cutter bar is reacting and then going from that setting. Below this setting, I can also then see my lift rate with manual operation. So this is the percentage of lift rate when I'm manually lifting and lowering that of my main cutter bar. If I increase the lift percentage, so if I increase the lift rate, so increase this percentage to the likes of maybe 10 or 15, when I then lift my cutter bar manually, I'm gonna have a faster lift rate on the cutter bar itself. And also for the lower setting, I can increase that sensitivity. So if I wanna increase that sensitivity right up, when I lower it, I have a quicker reaction for lowering my cutter bar making sure that if I have the sensitivity too high, I need to be wary that I'm not going to be then start digging my cutter bar into the ground when overpressing that of my main cutter bar button. You can also then see the drop rate with the auto contour. So this again is the sensitivity for the drop rate of my auto contour setting. Now to see my auto contour setting, I can see it displayed on the main side of the machine here. So again, this is my auto contour setting for that of my cutter bar, be that the Vario cutter bar, or today we're looking at the likes of the Convio cutter bar. 
So here we can see our auto contour settings. We can see our two lower end auto contour settings and our two upper auto contour settings or preset settings. So again, these are the settings on the left in which my auto contour functions are gonna be accessible using the auto contour bands under the cutter bar and my pre-select settings aren't using auto contour. They're pre-selected settings just going to a set rigid height. So here we can see I can flick on the go between the two auto contour settings. Now, if I engage that of my cutter bar, which I will do now, then I can then see my auto contour screen become active when I start adjusting my auto contour height. So if I lift the auto contour button on that of the joystick, you can see me go to my pre-selected height, which I have selected high at the top. I can also then flick to my second preset height by flicking the preset height button again. Again, this will then go to a second save setting. If I want to save a pre-select setting, all I have to do is press and hold on the preset menu. So for example, if I don't want my cutter bar to raise as high, I can bring it down to a save setting, press and hold, I will then hear my Seba screen beep and I now have a second saved pre-select setting. This is also the same for auto contour. So if I flick down on the joystick to the bottom most button, I then go to my pre-selected auto contour height. So at the moment I am below zero so I can see I'm using gap ground pressure rather than the auto sensing bands. If I flick it once again, I can see I'm going using my sensing bands. I can see I'm in that auto contour setting. Here I can see my sensor bands and my fluctuation and my height adjustment too. Again, just the same as my pre-selected height, if I do need to pre-save a setting, all I need to do is move the cutter bar, press and hold the save auto contour button, and now I can see I've saved a different position. Again, I can manually do this through the joystick, or I can do this through the favorites menu. So if through the favorites menu, I come down on my buttons to my auto contour height, I can using the rear button, bring my auto contour height down. And now I'm at a lower height than I was previously, and this is stored and saved in the system. I don't have to go in and press and hold my button to save the selection. Here I can see it's physically saved now. So every time I go to this auto contour setting, it'll load in this 60 percentage height. So we've just seen how to set an auto contour height. We can see here now, I have an auto contour height selected at the top. I can also then go into my second setting by flicking the button once again and change my, uh, my bottom most auto contour setting. So again, I can do this by saving, moving and holding the button, or I can do this through my favorite keys, selecting again my auto contour height and adjusting this to a positive number. So now I can see I am using my auto contour bounds, no longer using ground pressure. If I go into my front attachments menu, I can now see the rate of my drop for my auto contour. So again, if I'm coming into working position from my headland and I find that I want my auto contour to speed up, I need it to be a bit quicker when I'm dropping it down, then what I can do is increase the sensitivity. So if I increase the sensitivity, for example, to roughly 25%, when I then drop my auto contour into place, it'll be a lot quicker in movement. So here I can see I'm lifting on the headland, I'm bringing my cutter bar up, to its pre-selected height. And now I'm coming back into my working width. I drop my auto contour button and it's very quick in reacting to that button press. So again, the more I increase this sensitivity, the quicker the cutter bar is gonna drop when using auto contour. However, if I also decrease the sensitivity, it's gonna be a lot slower in movement. So if we do find it's moving a bit too quick for us or potentially banging on the floor, I can also then decrease the sensitivity back to zero or I can move it down to a minus number in which it's moving slower again. And then going through the rest of my front attachment parameters, I can also then see the maximum auto contour pressure setting. Again, this is something set from factory. We don't tend to adjust as operators. We don't need to worry about this setting. However, what this setting is doing is it's telling my cutter bar what is the maximum amount of weight it can put on the ground before my feeder house takes over. So again, my feeder house won't allow my cutter bar to put more than 400 kilos of ground pressure on the floor, so that we're not gonna be causing any additional damage to the cutter bar if we do need to be running it straight onto the floor. 
Next, we're going to take a little bit of a look at that of the Convio settings and functionality itself. So, we can see here that I have various settings available for my belts and my feed augers on my machine. So, if we flip to outside, we can see that if I move my reel up and out of the way, we have clear view of the belts, the both side belts and the center belt controls. We can see those two side belts are running in synchronization, and in that center belt is also controlled individually by a speed setting. So if I need to adjust these belt settings, we can see that I can come into my CBIS menu, come up to settings on my front attachment, and then I can come down to my belt speeds. Here I can see the belt speeds for my belts themselves. I can see the outside belts, and I can see the center belt control. Now at the moment I have the machine idling, so obviously the belts aren't going to be run as run as quick as what they would be if I have the machine on full track. If I then move the machine to high speed, so again the field working speed, we can then see our belt speeds increase. So at the moment I'm running my center belt at 100% and my outside belts at 90%. If I want to decrease these speeds, all I have to do is click on the relevant belt and decrease the percentage. So I can bring that percentage right down to a slow speed. And once I accept that, we can now see my side belts have decreased in speed. I can also do the same for my center belt. I can decrease that speed of my center belt right down, of which you can see is now working away. Again, we at class always recommend running your center belt quicker than that of the outside belts, so that we're keeping a constant crop flow through the cutter bar. So our side belts are feeding the center, and the center is feeding it up into the feeder house, all nice and even for it. Again, if I do need to increase or decrease my belt speeds, I can also have this accessibility on the go through that of my favorite keys. I can select a favorite setting, come in and adjust my belt speeds on the go without having to come through my CBIS screen. So here we can see we've now selected that of our belt speeds manually. We've manually selected our outside belt speeds and our center belt speed. These are displayed by the little icons on the display itself. What I can also do is set an automatic belt speed function. So here at class, we have a feature in our Convios and Convio Flex cutter bars in which we have automatic belt speed. If I go into my automatics menu, I can then go down and select my belt conveyor automatic functions. Effectively, with this mode enabled, the faster I go, the faster my belts go. So the faster my, I move my forward joystick, my C-motion joystick, the faster the belts are going to go to keep up with that forward speed gain. So in a light crop, if I find that I'm trying to push the joystick on a little bit further, I'm trying to go to the likes of 8 or 9K, then I will see my belts increase speed accordingly. However, if I then need to reduce speed because I've gone into a higher yielding patch, I will then see my belt speeds decrease slightly too. So again, they're constantly keeping up with what settings we have available. If I have my automatic function selected, when I then go back to my belt speeds, I will see that I no longer have manual adjustment, I have an offset. I can offset the speed of both my side belts and my center belts. So again, if I find that I need my center belts to run slightly faster when using in the field, I can speed them up in, in kilometer intervals. So again, if I'm doing 6K, my outside belt speeds will be in catching up to the likes of 7K, just to then keep the likes of crop flow moving around. Again, if I don't have this mode enabled, if I go back to my automatics, and then I disengage my automatic functions, I will see I have manual adjustment of my belt speeds. So whilst we're talking about belts, we're also gonna have a little look at our belt slip monitoring. So here on the Convio cutter bar in the parameters mode, we can see we have belt slip monitoring for both our side belts and our center belts. So if we do see that our side belts are potentially slipping, maybe they haven't been tensioned correctly or they require tensioning, then through our CBA screen, we will get a warning that our belts are starting to slip and that we need to potentially go out and tension them. So I can see I've got this mode turned on via the slip monitoring, and I can also then set a sensitivity for the belt slip too. So if I want to be warned very early or very prior to my belt slip, I can turn that sensitivity down. However, if I want to turn the sensitivity up, this will then give me longer delays in between my warning intervals. So currently you can see my current belt slip percentage. You will always have some form of belt slip percentage. And here you can see the limit which I'm selecting for that of my belt slip. I can also have standstill monitoring for my belt slip. So again, if I find that either my outer belt or my center belt has stuck or frozen for any reason, 
I will get a warning message on my Seba so I'm not carrying on cutting crop with those belts stuck in position. Again, this may cause, or this may happen due to incorrectly tensioned belts or a potential blockage on the belt itself. Finally, I can also reverse my belts on the go too. As a function here through Convio, I can go into my favorites menu and I can select the third party attachment or the third attachment menu for that of my favorites key. Here, when I activate the favorites key, we can see from outside my belts will stop and they will reverse on the go too. So if for any reason I need to reverse my belts because I potentially have a blockage, then I can do that on the move or on the stop still. And then my center belt will resume feed and then my side belts will resume feed. So again, we're keeping that cop flow consistent. We're not gonna be causing any unnecessary blockages when reversing this cutter bar. So again, what we'll do is if I need to activate this function, I need to make sure that my favorites key has highlighted this function. I need to make sure it's selected in my favorites. And then using my third party switch on the back of the joystick, I can then see I can stop my belts and reverse them on the go. As soon as I let off the joystick, we can then see the belts return back to normal speeds with that center belt and then that ISO belt too. Also, when I'm reversing my belts, I will also see my top feed augers reverse too. So again, in larger, denser crops, be that soya beans, oilseed rape, or maybe some hybrid crops, I can see the augers reverse themselves as well so that I'm not maintaining that crop flow into the center of the feeder house. If I need to enable my main augers on that other cutter bar, so as a UK standard, we specify our augers available for the likes of larger, denser crops. So again, if I'm in maybe some hybrid crops or some bigger, bulkier, bushier crops, for example, soybeans or peas, I can enable these augers too to aid crop flow into the center of the feeder house. I can do this at any time from the go. So if I was to move my reel up and out of the way, I can do this at any time. So if I go into my SEBA screen and into my front attachment parameters, I can see here the feed auger selection button. If I enable this, we can see my feed augers turn on and now they're feeding into the center of the feeder house. Again, the feed augers are ratioed off the side belts. So the faster my side belts are going, the faster these feed augers will also go. I can then also turn them off on the go. If I press the feed auger button, we can see them stop. However, the belts resume flow. One important thing to note is that if I have attached the likes of my side knife, so if I'm cutting an example rape, oilseed rape, these feed augers will be enabled from standard and they can't be disengaged if the side knife is turned on. So it is a dependency for our cutter bar that if the side knife is turned on, that the main feed augers are also turned on. However, with no side knife attached, I can turn the feed augers on and off as I will. Also on our Convio cutter bars, we have a prevention or a protection system on that of our reel. So in any scenario in which my reel is close down to the floor, close to the knife, as we can see here, my reel is moving down towards the knife itself. If I became into a scenario in which my reel was to start catching on the ground, we do have a safety prevention method, which is always looking at the back pressure of the hydraulic system for the reel. So, for example, if my reel started to scrape on the floor and I, as the operator, hadn't noticed it, then what the reel will do is it will slow itself down and will also automatically lift itself up. So, again, this isn't causing any further damage to the reel by dragging into the floor. All it will do is notice the back pressure from the hydraulic system, it will slow the reel down and then slightly lift the reel up out of the way. I do have some settings on this mode I can also check too. I can set the pressure at which the tractive reel effect comes into play. So if I increase that pressure setting or increase the sensitivity, I will see that my reel will lift itself out of the ground a lot sooner. Or if I decrease the sensitivity, the reel will stay in the ground a little bit longer. So again, maybe if I'm picking up the likes of laid crops with my reel, I might be adjusting this setting to see how it's reacting to my conditions. I can also then adjust the sensitivity of the tractive reel as well. So again, the sensitivity of the setting and how often it's coming into play, I can move that sensitivity around to.